Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, and I'm standing outside a property I've owned for a little while here, and it was probably one of the silliest purchases I ever made. And I knew it wasn't really a good investment when I bought it, but I just could not help myself. And it's a huge property, really interesting property, but uh, it's just too far away from me, needs too much work, and um, still might be an okay investment, but probably one I probably shouldn't have bought to start out with. And I think we're probably gonna sell that here, coming up real soon and this might be the last time I'm able to see this property which is one of the creepiest weirdest properties I've ever been in let alone um, purchased so we'll show you what it looks like now we have done some work to it and talk about our plans and of course we like the likes comments shares all of that great stuff and we'll have many more videos on our other flips rentals and real estate investments but let's take a peek at this one I'll tell you about why I bought it and um, what we're doing with it now. I bought this property, I don't even know how long it's been, a year and a half ago? I'd have to look it up and see. But I bought it after I bought another big 26,000 square foot warehouse out in Sterling, Colorado. I'm in Greeley, Colorado. Sterling's about 90 miles from me. This is in Brush, Colorado. This is about 50, 60 miles from me. And most of my other investments are all really close to Greeley, really easy to get to. This one, not so much, and the one in Sterling, I ended up paying, what I pay, 230 for that one. I sold it for 480? For, I think, was that what it was? I can't quite remember. Or was it 390, I don't know. But, made money on it, we did almost no work to it. I had it rented for a little bit to some random people but not really enough to pay all the expenses. This one has been vacant the whole time, but this one is 18,000 square feet. Used to be a furniture store, and it's been vacant for at least 10 years. Uh, looked up all the history on it a number of times. It was a furniture store since the 40s, we believe. I think the same family owned it that whole time. And it closed, someone else bought it. They just left it vacant forever, and it's just been a vacant property. And so it was for sale for 250000 for a long, long, long time. And I made an offer of one fifty. ended up getting it for that. So <laughs> it was very cheap for 18,000 square feet. But there's a reason, because it needs work, it's set up really weird, and it has some issues. So um, it's also very weird. I am not a superstitious person. I don't believe in ghosts. But this property kind of changed my mind about that. It just feels so weird every time you're in here. And this is like, I need to turn my light on, sorry. One of the least weird spots. And it's still super creepy. And the basement on this property is just one of the worst places I've ever been in my life. And there's really nothing wrong with it, except it's dark. But just getting close to it, you just, I don't know, start hearing sounds, start seeing stuff and just uh, kind of feel like you're going to be murdered soon, which I never really get that vibe in other properties, so I don't know. But um, it used to be a hotel originally, so this side right here, kind of, I think from that wall on the left over all the way to the other street was a hotel. They kind of split it in half. Oh, I should show you something else. almost forgot. And um, sold off the other side. It's now apartments. And then this side, like you said, furniture store, had all this stuff up here. Um, this was locked last time I got here and my contractor got it open. And it's just a closet, but there's a door back there that goes into the apartments next door. And the apartments next door were using this as a closet and had padlocked this door from the inside. And I made sure, I'm like, uh, you know, looked at our drawings and different things. It obviously goes with this side of the building, but who knows how long the apartment sex door had been used in that closet and then had this side locked up. Could have been years, could have been just recently, but you can see it ends right there. But yeah, they had kind of commandeered that little spot as their own closet. Now, you could do so much stuff with this. Has a huge upstairs here. Has two more upstairs. 
but there's no bathroom in any of them. There's three bathrooms. They're all on the main floor. There's no plumbing up here. So it would just take so much work to do it all. Now, one of the benefits of this place is it's in an opportunity zone, which means if you go through the process of setting up an opportunity fund, you spend at least as much on rehab as you buy it for, do some other things, you can literally have like a tax-free profit. I have another video that goes into all the details. And honestly, I don't remember all the details of how those funds work. And I started one, I was gonna go through with it, and then at, at a point where we had to file taxes and everything, I thought, it's just not worth it. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that goes through it to get it set up right. And then I'm like, I don't think I really want to do all that work out here. I have so many other projects going on. It's just not worth it to me to spend all that time and effort on this building. And then, you know, the city had also promised me a whole lot of different things on helping with grants and funds and none of that actually happened. So we applied for like one grant, the city helped with that, and then pretty much just stopped replying and helping us out and figuring that out. Um, some other stuff they're gonna help out with, nothing really materialized. So they actually did get on our case for not pulling permits to do the roof, which we redid, which I completely understand. I thought our contractors had done that, but we got that taken care of, got that fixed. And we did have to um, spend a ton of money on asbestos abatement as well here because we had a roof cave in, had videos on that as well, and had to redo that. But luckily, the insurance pretty much paid for all of that. So there's been a lot going on here. Here, this used to be a flat roof and it fell in and had to have most of this roof removed all the way over there. There's some other weird walls here and ended up putting a, f a slope roof all the way up over here. Cause there used to be a roof right here exposed and now it's all covered up, which is kind of crazy. So <laughs> we'll go up there. We'll show you that a little bit. And then um, see, it's a big space and this used to be from what we'd gathered, and I have to thank YouTube people for helping me out with this, a car dealership, like in the 1900, early, early 1900s. Um, it was some kind of garage, and uh, then eventually turned into the furniture shop as well. So I have not even seen all of this building, and I just realized my main flashlight is dead, which I really should have checked first, but you know. Um, this basement I never did see and it was so crazy looking. And then the door fell down on it, but all the stairs were broken and destroyed. I never went down there and nobody else wanted to go down there either. I just saw the other basement. And then I actually own the building right next door too, which was the cheapest property I've ever bought. I paid 23,000 for it. So um, I'll be selling both of these together, which kind of makes sense because one issue this one has is there's really not hard, any parking at all, right? The alley just backs up to, uh, or the building just backs straight up to the alley. There's basically no parking. And um, it'd be nice to have some parking. There's some street parking, but that's about it. And then one of the creepy things too is just, there's some power working in here, but not much. And um, it's so dark everywhere. And <laughs> you just don't know what's going on. Um, this is kind of cool though. This like ah, giant pulley thing for this door that shuts down there. We just discovered that last time we were here. But again, another crazy weird upstairs with no bathroom, no plumbing, which could be a super amazing apartment, but it would take so much money and time to get that done and done right. And we know the city would make you go through asbestos and all that stuff to um, get all of that situated. And then there's a third upstairs over here. And I'm still trying to decide if I wanna go into the other basement or not, because I don't have my good flashlight. It'll be a test of my willpower. This crazy spot, right? This place just gets crazier and crazier. And the last time I came through it, my contractor was with me which gives you a little bit of reassurance, but right now it's just me. And it just goes and goes and goes. And who knows how long it's been since this has been used. Again, 
no bathroom, no plumbing up here. And this is where all the roof was added. This used to be open to the elements. You can see the old roof. He caved in over there. And then they just redid all of it so that it could slope and work right. And like I said, I never would have done all that, gone to that expense, except the insurance covered it. So another crazy old furnace. So there's all kinds of stuff here. So our plan is to sell it now. We've got most of it cleaned up. Much better than it was when I bought it, even though you can see it's still pretty ugly. And I think I'm just gonna ask like 250 for this side, and then we'll show you the other side real quick. Maybe 80 for the other side. I, like I said, I bought that for $23,500, so we did clean up a little bit, fixed a wall that was broken, and um, that's about it. So, oh, this is the spot that's crazy back here. Another weird bathroom. And yeah, I used to have a light back here, but it's no longer working. And then, always see stuff floating in here too. And who knows, this door, make sure that door stays open. <laughs> I don't have anything that wants to shut. Hmm. There we go. And honestly, if I could, this is the crazy basement down there. If I could open this up, that might make it feel a whole lot less crazy. And then we can show you the back too. Oh, look at that, there's light. Oh, that's so much better. Now I won't get murdered, maybe. <laughs> we do have a carport, sorry. One tiny little carport. Then you can see the rest of it. That's the side with apartments. And then, yeah, you can see it's seen better days, obviously. And then, whew, it's so much better with that door open. I don't know why I never did that before. Still, not my favorite. But down here is the creep zone and it goes on forever and ever Back here so I'm not going all the way back there but I did before in some other videos and it's just weird oh, shoe who doesn't need a random shoe nails I wonder how old this paper is. 1978? I'm gonna take that with me. Okay, bye basement. That might be the last time I ever see you. Okay, here's the other building that I bought basically the same time, but they were actually for sale by separate people, separate agents and everything. So I closed on them within a week or two of each other, but totally different properties, but connected. And if somebody really wanted to redo that one, make apartments, make mixed use, you know, this could be a parking lot. It really could be. It needs some work. It's got some issues, but it was so cheap. And like I said before, um, I knew I probably shouldn't have bought this property, but sometimes I let my emotions for cool properties override my logic. And um, it still might work out okay, but definitely could have put my money to better use on something else. One of the good things about this is I, I think I sold rental property number, oh, what was it? 16? Was that it? And I used the proceeds to pay for most of this. I did not do a 1031 exchange. Like I said, I was going to do an opportunity zone, in which case you can use proceeds from another rental to invest into the opportunity zone and not pay taxes on those proceeds. However, I decide not to. So I still just end up paying taxes anyway. And um, so I have 
I bought these for all cash. I don't have a loan on them. It's not been eating away with interest or anything, but you still have property taxes and insurance. Like I said, the insurance paid for that roof, so that was good to have. And um, some other utility costs, things like that. Although pretty much the water's not on. The uh, electric is on in here, you can see. But on the other side, just some of it's on. And the heat has not been on either. So who knows how long the heat's been off, but when I bought it, the heat hadn't been on for years. It hasn't been on for a long time now. So I don't feel like changing that anytime soon or paying for that. So um, it hasn't been too bad for carrying costs. And we haven't done too much work out of pocket work, lots of insurance money work. So if I do end up selling it, it should be an okay investment. But we'll see what the market is for a place like this because it was for sale for so long before I bought it. But it is a little nicer now. That's our light switch. So that's the property. Um, when I did buy it too, that wall back there was collapsed on top. We rebuilt that whole wall. So we did do some work here. We did a little bit of roof work, but the roof on this side still needs some help. The roof on that side is mostly good, but there's some other spots that still need some help. So it's okay. Uh, one last thing I wanna show you that I almost forgot about in the other side, which is pretty cool. And then I'll be done. All right, one last thing I wanted to show before I head out of here. And I didn't find this till recently either. The super cool ceiling up there. And you can see an even cooler part. I'll show you here in a second. But in one day, one day, one day, whatever. <laughs> in the past, this is probably an incredibly cool building and hotel. Oh, they put this back. Leave this open. Oh, you can see it had it here too. Obviously part of it's been ripped out. But over here, you can see it had the old columns and so cool. But obviously that was a very, 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 very long time ago when that was still working or visible, whatever. Okay, that's the property. Probably the last time I'll see this beautiful thing and I'm okay with that. <laughs> if it was closer to me, it'd be pretty cool. And there's actually a old furniture store for sale that's closer to me. But the difference between the two areas, this is 18,000 square feet and I bought it for 150,000. That building is probably in slightly better shape, probably similar in size, maybe a tiny bit bigger. It's two and a half million. So there's a huge difference in that hour drive just on the different markets. It's a much smaller town, much less demand um, for this type of building. But still, we'll see how it goes trying to sell it. All right, thanks for watching. Love the support, love the comments, love the likes. Let me know what you think of this one. If you want a super cool project in Colorado, let me know. You've got a pretty good deal right here. All right, take care. We'll be back with more videos coming up here soon.